Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. Look at those ugly mugs. The Jersey Devil team on the way into Jersey City with our scorecard and a little emotion on Friday during the Manhattan Cup. Myself, Air Force veteran Richie Torres, Captain Brian Rice, my brother Clark Harris of the Cincinnati Bengals, hence the Tiger Ears, and Polly Walnuts racing in to some Baba O'Reilly. Richie did two tours in Afghanistan, was one of 29 warriors on a day that celebrates fisheries conservation and America's heroes. Just so happens that this hero had fish of 46 to 48 inches and later at the buzzard, buzzer, I don't think it was this fish, but he tallied a fish calculated at 52 pounds, a fish of a lifetime and helped our crew to our second Manhattan Cup chip in two years. Yes, my brother outfished me again. What are you gonna do? He's six foot six, 250 pounds, and battles NFL nose tackles for a living. So I ain't saying a word. I'm Jim Hutchinson with a New Jersey, Delaware Bay edition of the Fisherman Magazine. And if you're looking for jumbo stripers, they're still out there to be caught. We are word of that. In fact, it wasn't just Richie's 50 plus, there was another 50 plus pound striped bass caught and released in that catch and release tournament last Friday. So there's still some good fish out there along the beach. Plenty of fish swimming around Raritan Bay as well. 11 year old Brady Simo and his grandpa Jim Stanek had him last week aboard the Bill Fisher fishing out of the Atlantic Highlands. Brady also reeled in what I understand two other fish in the mid 30 pound range and he can't wait to get back out there. I wouldn't want to wait either. I can't wait to get back out there again next week. Supposed to be going out with Chuck Manny looking for some more jumbos. But there's good fish inside, um, inside throughout Raritan Bay. That's where some good numbers of fish are being caught. They're being caught up on top as well. Not just the mojos or the spoons or the live baits, but also some pencils and poppers. Uh, most of the bigger specimens, however, can be found outside along the front beaches of Monmouth County. Ocean County as well, because we had another buzzer beater to speak of on Sunday. It was just as I was finishing up our regular weekly reports for thefisherman.com. Craig Napolitano reported back to Grumpy Sunday afternoon. 51 inch striper bottomed out his boga, so he couldn't get an accurate measurement, but 51 inches on one of Grumpy's salted clams right before his release. That was a nice fish caught and released at Island Beach. So yeah, there's some big fish running along the beach. Just for timing sake, I, I went back to my phone. It's, I think our photos, you know, you go through and figure out where your photos are dated. It, it functions as a fishing log at this point, but I was looking back on a fish that I caught last year, uh, just slinging a small tin in the Bayhead surf. It was June 28th, 2020, caught this fish. So yeah, we've got plenty of time left to catch some good striped bass uh, along the stretch of the Jersey Shore coming up. Chris Madison tells me the top water bite in South Jersey out along the sedges and sod banks is still solid. It's been solid for a few weeks now. He had fish to 35 inches crushing spooks up on top. You just need a few cans of bug spray, he said. Uh, Chris's words were, they're literally out for blood, no doubt. You should have probably one more weekend ahead this weekend. Um, before we get into some of those greenheads coming up. Yeah, I figure the greenheads to arrive typically June 15th. That's what the locals tell me. Look for it this time next week. Joy. Holly Haynes from Berlin, New Jersey said she was super happy to catch this 28 inch striped bass right on the dock at Cape May. That was on Saturday reporting that she used her new super light goofish rod in the process. So yeah, the striper action continues throughout the region. Atlantic, Cape May, Ocean, Monmouth County. Couple have been reported on the incoming water, Indian River down in Delaware, um, some bluefish as well. Think nighttime especially, be careful on those rocks, but bucktails and swim shads. Back into South Jersey, the sheep's head are now in. That's great news. We got that from Mike Iconelli, the Bass Pro. He was apparently out last week fishing with Captain Dan Schaefer and Charles Breon aboard Insomniac Guide Service, giving folks in South Jersey in particular another alternative in the back on top of the flute, some weak fish, said stripers, 
and of course those black drum. Dan Schaefer, a couple of years ago, I was talking to him at the, uh, at the um, Atlantic City Boat Show, I think it was two years ago, I was asking him about some of those sheep's head. He told me he believes those sheep's head come in on the tails of the black drum. I know I've had black drum when I'm looking for sheep's head with a tog jig and some shedder crab, hoping for a sheep's head, I ended up with some puppy drum. So it's a good sign, I guess, if those black drum are in there, might be time to hit some of those uh, bridge structures throughout Central and South Jersey. I think the state record is still middle of the state in terms of the coast on that big piece of bridge structure in the middle of, you know, you know where. But look for some of that rubble uh, along the back as well, some of those old docks. No change in the black drum standing since we spoke last week. In fact, with three weeks to go, the drummer's still snapping and Larry Casella remains in first with a 74 pound boomer that he registered at hands to bait and tackle uh, just a couple of weeks ago. Now, if for whatever reason you're not a paid subscriber to the Fisherman Magazine, one of our, uh, one of our paid members, head over to the blackdrumbattle.com, not the blackdrumbattle.com. Make sure you're at least registered to win should a black drum come a calling. You don't have to be targeting black drum. But if you're not registered and you catch a boomer and say, wow, look at this bycatch, it's too late. You got to register before the tournament. I spoke with Joe Riley this week, who is not, he let his fisherman subscription lapse. He just signed up again. But he was striper fishing on Raritan Bay last week, throwing a mad mantis, looking for some striped bass, hooked up with a 74 and a quarter pound black drum that he checked in over at the real seat in Brielle. So no, he's not entered into that tournament. But he was surprised by that big black drum. It seems when these big fish uh, these big drums show up on the Raritan Bay and New York Bite. It's not so much clams anymore. A lot of times they seem to be uh, taken on jigs, sometimes top waters. The Manhattan Cup a couple of years ago, Frank Crescitelli put his charter onto one on a fly. Uh, in fact, uh, speaking with Joe, uh, he said a couple of years ago he saw a black drum chasing those bunker schools around as well. Not just the striped bass, but he said black drum were in there. So again, blackdrumbattle.com. If you're not a member of the Fisherman Magazine, you're not one of our paid subscribers, make sure you go to Black Drum Battle. Don't forget the Coastal Kayak Clash. You kayak fishermen, if you're out there on a regular basis, it's a catch and release tournament. There could be, you can keep the fish afterwards, but we're just going by tape measure. So go to thefisherman.com, get all the details on the Black Drum Battle, on the Coastal Kayak Clash, and of course, our Dream Boat Fishing Challenge, your opportunity to win a 255 Steiger and 300 Outboard, a 300 Yami Outboard. Great one. Good drum action on both sides of Delaware Bay at this point. Solid reports continue to come in from hands to bait and tackle in Cape May all the way down to Lewis Harbor Marina in Lewis, Delaware. Though offshore action is picking up, starting to change some attention patterns down there for the folks out of Lewis Harbor. Uh, it was reported that the John Ortiz charter on Strike Zone Sunday had a couple of bluefin on Blue Water Candy lures in pink with pink spreader bars and pink magic tails as well. They were reportedly trolling at poor man's. I've got an offshore weather forecast from NOAA Weather coming up in just a few minutes. We'll take a look at the midweek forecast for the weekend ahead. But first, let's turn our attention to the fluke action in the Garden State because that's what's going strong. Everyone's favorite summer fish. The back bay still seems to be where it's at for most folks fishing for fluke at this point. John Canosa said uh, he and his girlfriend were out on... Uh, uh, over the weekend, his girlfriend Diane had her first ever fluke, first keeper, a 22-incher off the back of John's Fish Pro Wave Runner in the backwaters in Absecon. Douglas, Douglas Kisby offered some good advice. He advised leaving close to the bottom of the tide. That's what he did this past weekend. He had a 29-incher somewhere back behind Ocean City. Was not revealing any spots, but he had, had to work through the shorts. That's what Doug said. Had to work through the shorts but there were plenty of big fish when he was getting in there. My dad, my nephew Riley, and I fished uh, that double contest over the weekend in Great Bay. We, we were tuckered in Bay. We moved to Great Bay, uh, back behind Beach Haven a little bit. We found plenty of keepers, but maybe should have taken Doug's advice. You just got to work through the smaller fish. We had plenty of keepers. Just wasn't anything worthwhile for us in that RFA Bass River Classic or the Ragin' Raymond. Um, but again, as Doug said, be prepared to work through some of the shorts. I know somebody who worked real hard. It was the crew of the SNS Bucktails team. They worked their butts off every year in those tournaments, and they did well. They had a clean sweep of the Ragin' Raymond and the RFA, RFA Bass River Classic. They had fish 
up to six and a half pounds or so. Congratulations, guys. Uh, that's the SNS Bucktails crew. Now, my buddy Ryan Shalaba was breaking in his new Sportsman Center console this week in the Manasquan River. Madison Cupido coolly and capably managed the first fluke ever brought aboard that nice, clean sportsman. Well done, Madison. Show those men how it's done and dirty up that cockpit floor. On the Shark River, we've got a report from Bobby Matthews at Fisherman's Den. He said fluking has been good with the rental boats. Uh, they're bringing in multiple keepers, though it's Bob Wonder of Yardley, PA. He had the fish of the week this week, eight and a quarter pounds. That beauty was taken on a bucktail and gulp, of course. Bobby Matthews said the blues are still in and they're in in high numbers. There was some nonstop action at Shark River Inlet on the rocks at Belmar earlier this week. And Bobby says the Belmar party boats are limiting out early on black sea bass. The bonus in some of those catches as well. Uh, some jumbo ling, large winter flounder as well. I was looking at Nick Honacheski's online uh, uh, social media accounts this week. He was on the Gambler catching some baseball sized ling uh, earlier this week. It doesn't necessarily have to be a far trip either if you're looking for some of those black sea bass. You're not looking to go to the offshore grounds. In our South Jersey reports this week that are posted at thefisherman.com, we're hearing anglers reporting good numbers from Garden State South all the way to Atlantic City Reef, so I would imagine Wildwood, Cape May as well. Uh, meanwhile, Jack Jolly let us know he was fishing with his brother-in-law uh, on his brother-in-law's boat, that's Ken Zuzi. Uh, in fact, Jack gifted his brother-in-law a gift subscription to the Fisherman Magazine. That's a great idea for Father's Day, you know. And, and anyway, Jack's niece, Kaylin Zussi, she tied into this nice sea bass. It was just east of the rattlesnake off the Shrewsbury Rocks Spro jig with Achille. So get ye to a head boat, get in on that black sea bass action while the action's hot, while the black sea bass season is open here in the state of New Jersey. You only have another couple of weeks. Uh, boats are putting some fluke in the box as well. And again, like I said, they're going for some of those ling, uh, some, some cod, uh, some exclusive summer cod trips. Um, but I'll tell you what, if you really want to spice up the box, here's a good idea for you. Uh, something even sweeter. Um, Kevin Fahey of the Curlew, he runs his boat out of Point Pleasant, new advertiser for us this year. Uh, he does combo lobster and sea bass charters. The Paul Berghire charter brought home some of the biscuits, but they'll also need some melted butter for the critters like this as well. For Kevin's contact info information and a lot of the contact information that I refer to on a weekly basis, go to thefisherman.com. Take a look at the regional fishing forecast, North Central South Jersey, surf, offshore, freshwater, and of course, Delaware. You'll go to profile pages for all of our advertisers. So if I mention uh, something this week about, you know, some good striper action and black drum at Riptide Bait and Tackle, you can find out their, con uh, their contact information by going over there to thefisherman.com. No lobster to speak of, maybe some crayfish. When we go out west, plenty of stripers to be had out there. Some trout and walleye too. Again, we've got some offshore and inshore weather forecasts, but first, let's check in with my friend George, the Pocono Outdoors guy. Well, hey, thanks, Jim. You know, the temperatures are starting to rise. Days in the 90s means that water temperature is creeping up through the 70s and even some spots into the 80s. So we have to be real careful when we're fishing for cool water fish like uh, stripers and brown trout. They're not going to fare real well in that warmer weather when we fight them up. you got to be sure you get them fish up and released as quickly as possible if you're not going to keep them. But there are guys catching a lot of stripers and brown trout. Guys up in Wall and Palm Pack, I see them catching huge brown trout. Um, the striper bite is doing really well too as they move down that cool, cooler water and start chasing bait around. Uh, there's also that great topwater bite. You know, guys are throwing those, uh, those plugs, those, those topwater poppers. And what's even better than throwing a zoom fluke into a, a school of busting striper? Sure to get a bite on there. Uh, don't forget also, guys, the night bite is uh, starting to turn on, especially for those walleye. You know, as these temperatures warm up, they're going to wait till nighttime. They're going to push up in that shallow water and they'll be feeding on those alewives that are all over right now. So, some really good fish. Guys, I hope you get out and get on them. From Pennsylvania, I'm George, your Pocono Outdoors guy. So I hope that Southwest on the outgoing tide did you guys well uh, over the weekend, this past weekend, as it did me. Uh, if you're going out this Saturday and Sunday, you'll have incoming most of the morning and the winds, well, appropriately enough, they're coming in from the east. Actually, Saturday looks to be northeast, 
Sunday, that dreaded southeast, but that's what it looks in, uh, according to the midweek NOAA weather forecast. That one's out of Atlantic City. As far as the offshore conditions, looks like a lot of three to fives in our forecast ahead. Uh, something to keep an eye on, especially for those of you fishing these final days of uh, the uh, Beach Haven Marlin and Tuna Club's Tuna Open. It's running all this week, 74 boats in that contest this week, competing for nearly $170,000 in cash. Last I saw, the crew of the, uh, the Hannah Juliana uh, were in the lead with a couple of good bluefin of 40.2 and 42.9 pounds. Good luck to those crews on the offshore grounds out of Beach Haven this week. Uh, fishing those final days of the tuna open, of course, for everybody who looks to be heading offshore and of course be safe as always. If you're looking for some tuna advice, perhaps pick up some jigging tactics before your Bacardi, Texas Tower, and uh, Triple Rex uh, adventures this summer. Pick up that June edition of the Fisherman Magazine, the New Jersey Delaware Bay edition. It's out this week in newsstands. You members will have it delivered to your home. There's a great article in there from Max Christensen over at The Real Seat. He talks a little bit about what you need to know on that tuna jigging. Again, if you're not a subscriber, go over to thefisherman.com. Get yourself in on it now. Get your father, your grandfather, your uncle. Uh, get a good gift uh, because you have access behind the firewall. You've got that $500 cash bonus in the black drum battle should you be the number one black drum. Uh, you've also got all the other special benefits and incentives. And of course, you're automatically entered into the Dreamboat Fishing Challenge for that 255 Steiger and 300 Yamaha. All kinds of great prizes. All you have to do is have a good fish out of eight different species on the leaderboard at the, at the end of the season. It runs all the way through November. And if you're on the leaderboard with something, you're going to you're going to take home something. But you're all competing for that great big grand prize. Catch them up this weekend, my friends. I will see you again next week right here at thefisherman.com.